fraud, deception, hacking. Today we'll be telling the story of how a man was able to steal over $100 million from Facebook and Google through a unique phishing scheme involving fake invoices. And ever since this first case appeared, the problem has only gotten worse. Quanta Computer is a Taiwanese manufacturer that produces electronic hardware. The company is quite prolific, with its customers including Apple, Facebook, and Sony. Quanta also supplies data centers to services like Amazon, Facebook, and Google. To make a long story short, they work with nearly every recognizable name in technology. Because of this, they're a prime target for bad actors looking to fleece their customers. That takes us to a man named Avaldez Ramaskis. Born and raised in Lithuania, the 44-year-old didn't seem out of the ordinary. He'd been married for two decades and had a long work history. That included, at one point, running his own construction business. Because of this, one wouldn't expect him to resort to a life of crime. Yet in 2013, that's exactly what he did. That spring, he realized how many companies relied on Quanta Computer, and saw it as an opportunity to make a lot of money. With the help of a few associates, he devised a plot to impersonate the manufacturer. The first step was collecting enough information to accurately imitate their target. Individuals began calling Quanta's customer service to glean their internal structure. This meant details like the name and contacts of key employees. That was then used to send phishing emails, which quickly gave them access to the company's email system. It provided a treasure trove of information about the business. The team now had copies of their documents which could be recreated effortlessly as well as their long list of customers. Meanwhile, the con man began prepping for the next phase of the plan. For their invoices to pass scrutiny, the account had to appear connected with the company. He resolved this by having a second Quanta computer incorporated in Latvia. It was registered with capital of exactly one euro by a man named Vladimir A. Vladimir then sold it to Avaldez 10 days later, who used it to create a bank account in the country. With the pieces in place, it was finally time to begin their heist. Out of all the different names Quanta was involved with, they decided on Google as their first target. The fraudsters started by creating emails similar to the ones they'd broken into. These accounts sent invoices with wiring instructions for supposed unpaid goods and services. Naturally, the request was scrutinized by Google. But the crew accounted for this by taking steps to make the scheme even more convincing. They fabricated additional documents such as contracts and letters. The former had signatures from company executives forged onto them. The latter was embossed with fake corporate seals. It was this that ultimately let them succeed in deceiving the Megacorp. And with a simple phone call, Google changed the information on file to their fake account. In total, they were sent over $23 million. It took months for Google to notice they'd been bamboozled, only reporting the theft to authorities in 2014. They notified Latvian police, who questioned Valdez under suspicion of fraud. The company pursued a civil remedy, forcing him to appear in court. Though he tried his best to lie, it was quickly ruled that the money was indeed stolen and had to be returned. The $23 million was frozen and eventually sent back to Google. And with that, one would expect this to be the end of the scheme. But surprisingly, in spite of the verdict, the scammers only became more bold, going on to perform an even larger stunt worth hundreds of millions of dollars. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. It's that time of the year again, and when you're looking for a gift everyone needs, Raycons are the way to go. I'm sure you've seen the sponsored messages before, but in case you haven't, Raycon offers wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers with premium sound. They also offer useful features and almost custom comfortable fit and up to 54 hours of battery life for half the price of other premium audio brands. Everyone needs a pair of Raycons in their ears, whether it's for listening to music, taking work calls, or blasting a workout playlist. So to check them out for yourself, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com gfm. 
and use code EARLYBF to get 20% off site-wide. Or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. There will also be different deals coming throughout the season, and I'll try to keep the description box updated with the latest offers. But just so you know, you can always go to buyraycon.com gfm to get the best deals available on Raycon. Despite being caught, the European swindler was not ready to give up his scheme. The following year in 2015, Avaldez traveled to Cyprus in order to create another bank account. He was now aware that many multi-million dollar transactions would arouse suspicion. To quell them, he showed statements from the first scam to verify the company's business dealings. Then the team got to work forging a new set of invoices, contracts, and letters. The criminals decided their next victim should be the social media company Facebook. They repeated the steps outlined earlier, now netting $26 million. But there was a new level to this plan. Because the initial heist was confiscated so quickly, they needed a way to ensure they could keep the money. Their solution was to wire the funds to correspondents across the world. This included banks in Slovakia, Lithuania, Hungary, and Hong Kong. Even if caught, it now required the assistance of several countries to retrieve the cash. Once the money was fully dispersed, the men tried for a larger jackpot. They aimed to get nearly three times the amount they did before. 74 million dollars. This placed their total theft from Facebook at 100 million. The money was sent, but didn't make it nearly as far. The large sum was heavily scrutinized, leading Facebook to realize they'd been defrauded. The conglomerate was quickly able to reverse the second transaction, but as for the first, it was too late. Any chance of retrieving those funds required direct intervention from the United States government. As several of their accounts were frozen, Avaldes read the writing on the wall. He attempted to distance himself by selling Quanta Computer. But this was in vain. In March of 2017, the middle-aged man was arrested upon returning to Lithuania. The US Justice Department found enough evidence to indict him for wire fraud and money laundering. Four months later, it was formally ruled that he'd be extradited to the United States. The indictment doesn't specify which companies were involved, referring to them as Victim 1 and 2. However, their identities were leaked to the press, likely due to being so high profile. The world became enamored at the idea of such massive corporations being scammed. This led to some misinterpretations, such as the headline, Man stole $122 million from Facebook and Google by simply sending them random bills which they paid. While the idea of a Robin Hood figure is appealing, the scheme was clearly more sophisticated. In fact, so much so that in spite of his arrest, the plot at large was still successful. Avaldez was ordered to pay restitution of $26.4 million, the exact amount of their initial theft from Facebook. This is because it was never recovered, with the majority being lost as the money hadn't been frozen in time. As mentioned before, Avaldez had no priors and was otherwise an upstanding citizen. This begs the question of what led him to a life of crime. Well, as it turns out, the answer was quite tragic. Throughout their marriage, he and his wife Olga attempted to conceive children, but despite their efforts, they never succeeded. The couple realized their only option was vitro fertilization, which they couldn't afford. This led Valdez to fall into a deep bout of depression. He began binge drinking to the point of being blackout drunk. His wife even recalled that in this state, he often didn't recognize her. The addiction began in 2013, the exact time as their scheme. Upon pulling off the heist, Avaldez started to get his life back on track. In early 2017, he told Olga he was going to seek help from a doctor to end his addiction, admitting that he couldn't handle it himself. Then they planned to finally do vitro fertilization. Unfortunately, soon after, the would-be father was detained. While Avaldez is often considered the ringleader, it's not actually clear if that was the case. The prosecutors themselves speculated he may have been acting under someone else's direction. Despite obtaining millions, he personally kept only $100,000 of the cash. So there appeared to be co-conspirators who outranked him in the operation and he was merely a patsy. 
His lawyer pointed out, they don't allege he created this conspiracy. They don't allege he brought the technical computer knowledge to execute it. They don't even allege he translated documents from Lithuanian to English. They admit of all the money lost, it's about $100,000 that he got away with. He went on to argue that his client had an easily replaceable role. He was brought on for his EU membership, which allowed him to open several bank accounts. Avaldez even claimed not to be privy to the entire scheme. In response to where the money went, he stated, I'm not 100% sure because I was asked to open bank accounts. After that, I did not do anything. But this is hard to take at face value given his contradictory statements. Upon arrest, the man feigned ignorance. Through his lawyer, he admitted to owning the fake company, but said it was for legitimate purposes. He implied that Quanta Computer was to be developed into a construction business. It wasn't until February of 2019 that the con man pled guilty, agreeing to forfeit $49.7 million. He was sentenced to five years behind bars, as well as two years of super supervised release. Before learning his fate, he said, Your Honor, I regret that I committed this crime, and I can promise you it will be the first and last time I find myself in a courtroom. I very much want to return back to my native country and to hug my relatives that I have not seen for a very long time. Part of the reason behind Valdez's confession may have been due to family matters back at home. Ever since being deported, his elderly mother's health started to seriously decline. The 73-year-old began to suffer from serious nervous system disorders, which required regular visits to the hospital. Because of this, Olga had to take care of her and help with farming. This became especially stressful when in December of 2018, her own mother passed away. In addition to his mother, she now had to take care of her father. Needless to say, there was immense pressure for the man to return home and comfort his loved ones. To this day, no one else has been charged for their involvement, but it can be inferred the others likely went on to perform similar heists. In 2019, the FBI officially termed the scam as business email compromise. They called BEC one of the most financially damaging online crimes, being used to steal over $26 billion worldwide. The first recorded incident was likely of Aldez, taking place in October of 2013. And ever since, there's been a massive increase in companies falling victim for these schemes. From 2016 to 2019 alone, there were over 160,000 reported cases. So it seems likely his co-conspirators didn't stop and instead refined their technique over time. It remains to be seen if they ever will be caught. Though last August, the docket for the Facebook case was updated to state the funds had finally been restored. The company at the center of this, Quanta Computer, was silent throughout the ordeal. Their spokeswoman made just one statement. We did not suffer from any financial harm from this incident. Unfortunately for them, months after the sentencing, they fell victim to yet another cybercrime. This time, hackers infiltrated their network and obtained confidential documents from their customers. This led Quanta and Apple to be blackmailed for over $50 million. But that's a story for another day. So there you have the story of the man who stole millions from Google, or at least the one that they caught. And with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.